I once got a phone call from a young couple. Let's call them Fred and Ginger. Ginger called and said she and her husband, Fred, were ready to buy a home. Their lender told them that they were qualified for up to $400,000 and they had found the perfect home online. We made an appointment to go and see and they fell in love with it. Then we sat down to write the offer and everything came to a screeching halt. Let's talk about why. Welcome to Home Buyer Reality Check. What you need to know before you get started. Hi, my name is Judy Brown and I'm a licensed real estate broker in the state of Colorado. You can find out more about me and my experience at my website, judybrownrealty.com. Today's video, we're gonna cover four main topics. One, are you ready to buy? Two, buyer beware. Three, how much does it really cost to buy a home? And four, do you know the market where you're planning to buy your new home? Let's talk about what Fred and Ginger might do differently in the future. I've worked with many buyers over the years, and whether it's your first home or your 10th, being prepared can be your best asset. So let's talk about how you can be better prepared than Fred and Ginger. Are you ready to buy? Let's cover the items that will help you be better prepared to purchase your new home. First and foremost, how will you pay? The majority of us will be using a mortgage to purchase our homes. So we're gonna make that assumption as we go through the rest of this video. Next is how much money have you been able to save? Later on in this video, I'm gonna talk in detail about how much does it really cost to buy a home. But for now, know that in addition to the down payment, you're gonna need some additional money available to cover things like loan closing costs, prepaid items, and miscellaneous out-of-pocket expenses. So hold that thought for now, and we'll cover that more later. Next is your credit. Have you looked at your credit report recently? It's a great time to review that and see if there's any items that need correcting. Often, a small error in your credit report can cause hiccups in that loan process. So you'll want to take care of those sooner rather than later. And then it's good to know your credit score or FICO score. The reason this is important is that score can directly affect the amount of interest you pay, or if you're in a position where you need to pay mortgage insurance, you're going to find that that uh, credit score can affect how much mortgage insurance that you're going to end up paying. Next is monthly affordability. Hey boy, this is really important. Just because the lender says you can qualify for a certain uh, home price doesn't mean that you as an individual are gonna be comfortable paying that much. So I want you to be really aware of the additional costs that come with home ownership. So in addition to that mortgage, the principal and interest on that mortgage, you'll be needing to pay for property taxes, homeowners insurance, there may be additional utilities that you'll need to cover, which you may not be used to covering now, home maintenance costs, HOA fees. There can be a lot of things that go into that monthly affordability. So I want you to be well prepared for what you are comfortable paying so that you can remain financially secure. Next, we'll talk about timing. Have you looked at your lease lately if you're a renter? Do you know when your lease is up? Do you know how much it would cost if you decide to move to a month to month lease? What about a payment or a penalty for terminating your lease early? You'll want to know that. If you're a homeowner and you need to sell your current home in order to purchase a new one, you also want to have a strategy so that you can make that work to your best benefit. And the last three items on here are all about the home you want to buy. The location, where do you want to live and why? What, what style home do you want? Condo, townhome, single family detached? And what are the features that are important to you? We really want to have um, a good idea of all of these things before you step into the, to the process of buying a home. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is buyer beware. Why buyer beware? Well, purchasing a home is no different than any other consumer product. And it is up to you as the buyer to be sure, be sure you understand everything about that product or home that you are about to purchase. 
So let's take a look at some critical items related to that. Location, location, location. I know it's a cliche, but the fact about cliches is they're cliches because they're true. So you can find the perfect house, but if it's in a terrible location, there's nothing you can do about that. You can't pick that house up and move it to a better place. But if you find a house that you like, but is in a perfect location, that is the best situation because you can always turn that house into the perfect home. So this is where it's really important that you understand what matters to you about location. And here are some things to consider as you go through that process. Schools, where do you work and how much time are you willing to spend commuting? What about the crime rate or the city services? Do you need to be close to family and friends? Do you need to be close to your church? If you have health issues, is it important that you're close to hospitals? Do you need to be close to an airport? What about walkability? Access to outdoor recreation? Here in Colorado, the closer you get to the mountains, the higher the purchase price of homes. So if that's not important to you, it might be worth considering not paying the premium to be close to the mountains. And of course, there's a blank line here for you to fill in with the issues that are important to you. Let's talk about a few other things that you might want to consider. These items maybe are not as um, top of mind as location of your home, but I think they're very important. If you're going to move into an area that has a homeowners association, you'll want to know a little bit about it. So what are its restrictions? Do you have a dog and they don't allow pets? Why even bother looking there? City zoning and long-term planning. This is really more important than a lot of people think. What if Fred and Ginger had purchased their dream home and the next thing they knew their neighbor knocked over the house and built a triplex there? And they didn't want to live in an area like that. They wanted to live in a neighborhood with single family homes. Well, it's entirely possible that the zoning for their area allows for triplexes. And in the next 10 years, they could be surrounded by them. So very important to understand that. Neighborhood amenities. What about traffic and noise? You'll want to drive through the neighborhoods that interest you at different times of day to understand exactly what you'll be encountering. Is there a new development that's coming online soon? What about oil and gas development? You know, that's a big deal here in Northern Colorado. What if they decide to start a new drilling operation not far from your home? That will directly affect your property values. And of course, access to utilities. It all depends on where you live. But you want to make sure that you have access to all the utilities you want. And it may be really important that you have a great cell signal or that there's high-speed internet available where you're planning to go. So definitely think about that. And this is all things that can be done prior to really even to start looking at a home. Now, I do want to take this time to say there is definitely a due diligence portion of the real estate transaction itself where you're going to be given time to do serious due diligence about that home, home inspections and seller property disclosures and all of those things. But this is about taking care of items up front so you don't waste your time and you get all the way down to the wire and find out that you can't have a dog in the condo and now you've already spent money on a whole bunch of things. So let's take care of that ahead of time. Oh boy, this is a big one. How much does it really cost to buy a home? You know, this can be really underestimated by a lot of buyers. And I mentioned it before that we were going to address this. So now we're going to address it in much more detail. In fact, this is where Fred and Ginger really got caught by surprise and why we had to stop and restart the whole process. Okay. Cost to buy a home. We talked about the down payment. That's going to be anywhere from 3 to 20% of the purchase price. Those are pretty common areas. I'm not going to go into special loans that allow you to just do $1,000. Those are much more complicated, and that's not the intent of this video. Then there's going to be loan closing costs. Now, those can range, again, depending on the loan product and your personal situation, anywhere from 1% to 5% of the purchase price. Here in Colorado, with the regular run-of-the-mill loan, I, I typically see 
one to two percent of the purchase price that is the cost included in the cost to buy a home. So when I say cost to buy, this is the money you need to have available and bring to closing to close the transaction. And here are some things that usually are included that make up those loan closing costs. Next, let's talk about prepaid charges. This is an, this is an interesting area because People know that they have to pay for these items, but they don't realize that some of them have to be paid at closing. So that's, again, additional money that you need to have available and bring with you to closing. So your homeowner's insurance, typically that's paid in advance. So they're going to ask for your premium for one year up front at closing. Next, most people get a loan and their lender is going to take on the responsibility of paying the homeowner's insurance premium and the property taxes. And in order to do that, they are going to take a small portion of your monthly payment each month and put it into an escrow account. So when the property taxes and the homeowner's insurance premiums come due in the next year, they will have the money in your escrow account to pay those bills. So at closing, they'll typically want at least three months worth of those um, fees to put into the escrow account. If you've paid less than 20% down um, as a down payment, it's highly likely that you're going to have a mortgage insurance cost in your monthly payment. But in some cases, you'll also have to do some prepaid mortgage insurance. And that's entirely dependent on your loan. And your lender can let you know what that cost may or may not be. And then if you're in a homeowner association area, there's often some prepaid items that you have to bring at, to closing which may just be a, a month or two of HOA dues or something like that. And that's 100% dependent on the individual homeowners association. And then there's additional costs. And these are typically out of pocket. So your inspections, which can range you know, up to $1,000 or more. It all depends on how many inspections uh, you decide to order home inspection, sewer survey, radon, termite inspection, mold inspection, it goes on and on. Appraisal is usually paid at the time that the appraiser is, appraisal is done, and that's the responsibility of the buyer to pay for the appraisal, uh, and that is an out-of-pocket expense. And you can see here in Colorado, that cost is somewhere between six and eight hundred dollars, at least that's what it is right now in 2020. And then, of course, you have your other miscellaneous costs like moving and cleaning or whatever you might need to do. So it's important to know what those are. So you can see how quickly um, those can add up. And if you aren't aware of those, how easily you can be caught by surprise and not have enough money to make it to the closing table. Oh, next I want to talk about understanding the market. So why does this even matter? Here's why it matters. If you're getting ready to go out and start to look at homes, it's really important that you know how quickly you have to make a decision. And the way that you can know that is to understand the market for the area where you plan to be looking for homes. So this is where you want to get your real estate professional involved. They can really help you look at these numbers and understand how quickly you're going to need to respond when you see that house come on the market that you really want to buy. So you'll want to know the median price range for similar homes in the area. You'll want to know the average days on market, how quickly are you going to have to respond. Inventory and absorption rate, basically what that is, how quickly, not just days on market, but how many homes are available in, in the market. So what is that inventory and how many months supply is available? And that's that absorption rate. And then you want to talk about any other issues that might directly affect the market and your ability to purchase. So we already talked about the tax rate, right? The property taxes here in Colorado, property taxes can vary greatly from area to area. So you'll want to have your real estate um, broker help you understand what the property tax rate is for the area that you're looking. Of course, we talked also about HOA fees. So you'll want to know what those are for an area. Potential zoning issues, that's part of the market. Those will directly affect 
um, how quickly things are moving. And then the city and county government issues potentially that are in place or in the future that might affect the market. So those, that is definitely where your real estate broker can help you. So let's look at a quick example. This is from December 2019. This is a, some quick information. And I just did a general um, statistics for a three bedroom, two bath home and what the market looks like in Denver and Aurora. So I compared Denver and Aurora because they're both very large cities here in Colorado. So the median price, meaning that there are homes that uh, the equal number of homes above and below that purchase price. So it just gives you a general feel for where you are in that market. So in Denver, it's 460,000. In Aurora, it's 335,000. The median days on market is about the same in both markets. The number of active listings, 141 in Denver and only 75 in Aurora of three bedroom, two bath homes. So the absorption rate or month supply in Denver is one, meaning based on how quickly they're selling, the, those 141 homes will be gone in a month. In Aurora, it's less than a month. So don't you see how this information might help you decide on where you might want to target uh, your home search? So this is why the real estate market is so important for you to understand. So let's wrap this up. Are you ready? Do you know how much you can afford? Have you looked at your credit rating? Are you comfortable with the kind of house you want to buy? How many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? Do you want a garage? Do you not want a garage? And on and on. Are you ready to start looking at, at for houses? Buyer beware. Have you done your homework? Have you done your due diligence? Do you understand all the things that you need to understand in order to make an informed purchase? Do you know how much it's going to cost you to buy that home? Have you talked with your lender? Do you have all of those things in place? Do you understand those additional costs that come with home ownership? And do you know the market in the area that you want to buy? Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I really do appreciate it. If you want to learn about my company or more about me, go to my website, judybrownrealty.com. Don't forget the E at the end of Brown. You'd be surprised how many people do. And if you have any questions about real estate, I'd be happy to answer them. So you can reach out to me there at my website. I have a contact form. My phone number and email are available there as well. If you live in the Denver metro area and you're thinking about buying or selling a home, I'd love to connect with you, see if it makes sense for us to work together. So just remember that the place you call home matters. So when it comes to real estate, you want someone by your side who gets it. Someone who understands your needs and won't stop until it's right. And I can promise you that that's me. Happy home buying.